what's up YouTube, happy coming to you, Captain Awesome's Fish Room. It's a great day, middle of the week, hump day, some of y'all may call it. Just fantastic. You know what, because as soon as I pass that threshold, no matter how bad or a good day I had, it gets even better and better and better as soon as I pass through this doorway right here. Let me give you an example, people. Let me just show you. Look, Hefe having a bad day. Today sucked. Blah, blah, blah. There's my Wooga monster. Pass through the threshold. Man, damn, I'm having an awesome day. What's up, Wooga mama? What's up, girl? What's up with that Wooga? Oh, damn, my Wooga, yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about, guys. You can be having a horrible day. You walk inside your fish room and then boom. Happy day, happy day, awesome. A uh, few housekeeping notes before we get into today's video, which is going to be very interesting, I may add. Uh, this is to my buddy Katie here on YouTube asking about my Ludwigia Inclinata Tornado. Here it is, right here, girlfriend, as a little shrimpy passes by, right there, there it is. Boom, 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 boom. Looking good all the way to the bottom. Uh, but what I'm going to do, guys, with uh, this Ludwigia Inclinata Tornado, I'm just going to call it Ludwigia. Uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set up its own 10-gallon tank with some awesome substrate, a little bit of root tab action. You know what I'm talking about. All you Planet Tank fans out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going to set up its own little 10-gallon and... Ooh, excuse me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this plant in there with some good light and I'm going to cut it and plant it and then when those two grow up I'm going to cut it, cut it and then plant it, plant it and then when those four grow up I'm going to cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it and then plant it, plant it, plant it, plant it. Y'all get what I'm trying to say? So yes, there it is Katie looking awesome and uh, you know we're going to get you some over there, over there. Don't, don't even worry about it, gear. Don't even worry about it, gear. Ooh, check out that uh, Dwarf Hydrocado, by the way, guys. Looking dope. Fantastic. Lovely. Um, second housekeeping note. Guess what I found at Harbor and Freight, a local tool company here in Texas. Uh, these little... Um, they're not like a regular bulkhead. Let me show you a regular bulkhead. Here's a regular bulkhead, right? Talking about 12 bucks for this, 10, 12 dollars, maybe even seven or eight dollars, but you know, generally expensive, you know, uh, for what it is. You go to your good old Harbor and Freight or a uh, hardware store that, you know, uh, I don't know if all of them carry it, but I know Harbor and Freight did. Um, and they have these pretty awesome little, uh, little bulkheads, three quarter inch right here. They have all different sizes. Guess how much I paid for that, ladies and gentlemen. Paid four dollar and fifty five cent. Four dollar, four dollar, make me holla for some bulkhead. Got uh, two of those boys. Got two of them. I'm gonna test them out on the fifty longs. I think I've decided that I'm gonna take all three fifty longs, and I'm just gonna make three planted tanks, guys, because I love all kinds of species of plants, and I can't just limit myself to one planted tank. I can't do it. I'm addicted. And uh, Peabody's Paradise, David, if you're watching, bro. You're killing me. You're killing me. All those awesome plants you're selling, dude. I'm already planning my next order. What are you doing over there, Peabody's? Shout out to Peabody's, by the way, guys. Best, best damn plants out there. Best prices, quality, quantity, great customer service, and he's a cool guy. But uh, anyways, um, what else do I have before we start today's video? Nothing. Okay. So, today's video is actually going to be a Q&A video. Um, I had a gentleman ask me a question for last Q&A Friday, and I felt that, you know, it deserved its own video because it is a great question, awesome question, very interesting question, and I'm going to love explaining it to y'all. So, oh, watch out, Wooga. Watch out, girl. I got to walk, girl. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. You can just stay there. It's okay. I'll move. It's your world. I'm just living in it, Wooga Mama. I'm just living in it. This is Macy, ladies and gentlemen. This is my English bulldog, Macy. Yeah, her spoiled rotten. Her sleep on the couch. Her sleep on the couch every night. Oh, yeah, get that Dr. And Dr. Foster and Smith doggy food. Yeah, spoiled rotten bulldog. Spoiled rotten. Oh, yeah, oh, you just spoiled rotten. But anyways, guys, 
uh, the gentleman name, the gentleman's name that asked the question, Epic Cichlid, 2013 asked, is algae considered a underwater plant? Does it photosynthesize and does it take oxygen away from the water like aquatic plants do? Fantastic question, bro. Fantastic question. I love that question. Um, that's one of the most interesting things about this hobby. Uh, a lot of you guys that are into, into terrestrial plants, uh, that should also be interesting to you too because algae exists everywhere, terrestrially, aquatically, uh, snow, everywhere guys, everywhere. You show me an environment without algae in it and I'll show you an environment unsuitable for any living thing, okay? Including aquariums, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's get started. Um, first part of the question, is algae a plant? Uh, this is debatable, but I'm going to tell you my opinion on it. It is a plant, but it's not a plant. Okay? I know some of y'all just, like, giggled or, you know, maybe laughing at me right now, but... Um, it'll make sense, uh, I hope, after I explain this. Um, it is a plant in the fact that it's a living, growing organism, but it's not a plant uh, because it's, it's, not, uh, it's not in the same group of organisms, I guess you could say. Uh, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, um, I'm going to put a few links to a few websites inside the description so y'all can go read about it. But anyways, um, let's see, now that we got that out of the way, does it photosynthesize? Yes, algae photosynthesizes. As a matter of fact, it photosynthesizes just like a plant does, okay? Uh, it takes in sunlight, which is its energy source, and it takes in nutrients from the water, um, and it produces oxygen, and it takes in CO2. Uh, you know, just like a plant photosynthesizes, algae photosynthesizes. Uh, same concept, guys, same exact concept. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is where uh, it can get kind of confusing, um, because, you know, a lot. you'll hear a lot of people, like with ponds and stuff, say, oh, I love having a green water pond. And then you'll have other people saying, oh, green water ponds are horrible, they're bad, they're bad for the fish, blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, both, of those, both of those arguments are true to an extent, okay? Uh, having green water inside of a pond, uh, it, it can be an okay thing. Uh, there's a lot of microorganisms that feed on that type of algae. The fish can actually feed on it. Um, you know, stuff like that, but if it gets too out of control, what it can actually do is starve that ecosystem, deplete the oxygen from that ecosystem, and kill everything in that ecosystem except for the algae itself. Um, now, you would also have, with that much algae inside of a system, you would also have uh, algal uh, death, um, and that would start to decompose, uh, in turn, you know, creating a lot of nasty things that we don't have time to talk about inside of a YouTube video. Um, and, you know, it can, it can lead to a bunch of different uh, horrible problems down the road. Um, so, yes, it does photosynthesize, guys. It takes in light uh, as an energy source, uh, just like a plant does. Um, now, indifferent from a plant, uh, they don't have, uh, you know, stems or leaves as you uh, would say that a plant has, okay? Now, algae, uh, there's microalgae and there's macroalgae. Um, there's single-celled algae, there's multi-celled algae. That's why, you know, it's debatable whether it's inside the plantae kingdom or not in the plantae kingdom. I'm just going to say plant kingdom because saying plantae kingdom kind of sounds like I'm um, trying to be some kind of PhD professor dropping knowledge bombs on you on YouTube. So that's how that's why it's arguable whether or not it's inside the plant kingdom. Um, you know, blah. So uh, what was the next part of that question? Uh, does it take oxygen away from the water like aquatic plants do? Okay. 
aquatic plants uh, during the day do not take oxygen away from the water. Uh, they actually produce oxygen inside of the water. Uh, during photosynthesis, plants actually uptake CO2, which is carbon dioxide along with other nutrients inside the water column and inside the uh, substrate system that you have. Um, but during the night, uh, the roles are reversed. The plants aren't photosynthesizing anymore, and they actually uptake oxygen and produce CO2, carbon dioxide. Um, and yes, algae does that too. Algae produces oxygen when it photosynthesizes. I wish I was at my mom's house right now. She has some really nice algae grown on her rocks inside of her turtle tank. And uh, it photosynthesizes with the lights that she has over and it gets little, uh, it, it pearls just like, just like you see the HC pearling here. Uh, algae will pearl like that too. Okay. So algae does produce oxygen for the water, and uh, it does uptake CO2 just like plants do, uh, but it also takes in oxygen at nighttime just like plants do and produces CO2 just like plants do. Um, and, you know, whether or not algae is a good thing, uh, that's where I want to extend this video. I think I answered all those questions. Let me, let me look at the paper real quick. Uh... Considered underwater, photosynthesis, oxygen, yes, I did, okay. I covered all those, uh, so Epic Cichlid 2013, uh, I hope that helped, bro. Now, I also had another gentleman ask me a question about cyanobacteria, okay, guys? Cyanobacteria, it isn't actually an algae, it's a bacteria, okay? Now, it is inside an algae... It, it is inside the, the algae uh, organism group, um, but it's not an algae, it's a bacteria. Um, now, this gentleman asked me uh, about it now um, and, how to, and how to get rid of it, per se. Uh, I didn't write down the name, and for some reason I cannot find it, uh, the email that I got with the question uh, from the gentleman. So... Uh, you know, whoever asked it, thank you for asking, and please leave a comment below saying, hey, Jeff, it's me, come on, you know, or, hey, dummy, it was me that asked you, come on, but uh, anyway, cyanobacteria, there's actually, oh, uh, excuse me, um, there's actually uh, several, I mean, several different species of cyanobacteria, guys, uh, several different species. There's actually species that can produce toxins strong enough to kill mammals. People included. Hint, hint. People included. Okay? Now, generally, the cyanobacteria that people are talking about is the cyanobacteria or blue-green algae that grows inside of our aquariums. Okay? Um, it, it, it is very unsightly. That's one of those multi-celled algaes. Uh, or bacterias, um, it is unsightly and it can cause horrendous damage to a planted tank. Cyanobacteria is horrible. Um, it's, it's definitely not welcome inside any aquarium and let me tell you how to get rid of it guys. Um, of course your water changes and you know, uh, you know, upping the flow, adding a, uh, an air stone with a bunch of, you know, with an air pump and stuff like that. Upping your flow and water changes will help. But, let me give you a hint on how to eradicate blue-green algae slash cyanobacteria, whatever you want to call it. Let me give you a hint on how to eradicate it. I'll show you, okay? Erythromycin is blue-green algae cyanobacteria's worst enemy ladies and gentlemen worst enemy and when I say worst enemy I mean it eradicates it uh, generally it takes three to four days sometimes seven depending on how bad the outbreak is um, but erythromycin is the perfect anecdote to get rid of it okay now you can get erythromycin in several different ways I prefer the powder form over the bubbly fizzly tablet form um, because you get a more concentrated amount. Uh, generally, it comes in uh, 200 milligram packets. Uh, and I'll give you an example of that right here. This is Centuries um, uh, Myrosin. 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 Um, 
API also makes a, a M or CM erythromycin. Uh, you actually get more for your money, and this is still a great company. It's by Mardell. But um, erythromycin. Now, if you read if you read the instructions, uh, generally you're uh, with the erythromycin, you're treating for stuff like uh, fin rot, uh, Popeye, hole in the head, stuff like that. Um, now, it's going to tell you to dose one pack per every 10 gallons. Now, if you're treating cyanobacteria, guys, you don't use that much. And let me tell you something about erythromycin. It is a dangerous antibiotic if you do not use it right, okay? What it does is it depletes oxygen from your water column, okay? So you want to err on the side of caution when you're using this and follow these directions, okay? Whatever the directions on the packet of erythromycin say that you buy, okay? For simplicity, let's say I had cyanobacteria inside this 40-gallon breeder right here. Generally, erythromycin with 200 milligrams, it's one pack per every 10 gallons. So I would use four packs for this 40-gallon tank right here. Okay, and that's if I'm treating uh, some kind of illness that erythromycin is good for for fish. Okay, now if you're treating cyanobacteria inside of a 40-gallon tank, you want to use half of the, rec of the manufacturer's recommended dose. Okay. So, instead of using four packets, I would use two packets to treat this tank and get rid of cyanobacteria, okay? Now, let me tell you how it does this. This is how you know cyanobacteria is not an algae, ladies and gentlemen. Erythromycin is an antibiotic, okay? Now, what? whenever you go to the doctor's office, what do they generally give you? To, to make you feel better when, uh, you know, you've caught something that's not viral. They give you an antibiotic, okay, because antibiotics kill bacteria. <laughs> I know, I know, but, uh, you know, some people, I just wanted to make sure that it's clear for everybody. Now, erythromycin, what it's going to do is it's going to dissolve inside your water column. The antibiotic itself is going to dissolve inside your water column. Um, and what it's going to do is actually attack any bacteria that's inside your system. Now, you may be saying, well, Jeff, I don't want it to kill off my nitrifying bacteria. Guys, um, you know, there's been studies done that, you know, it, it could actually, uh, you know, hurt some of your nitrifying bacteria. But... In general, uh, it's not enough to notice, and it's definitely not enough to get an ammonia or nitrite spike if you use it correctly, okay? Now, of course, if you go in and you pour 10 packs inside of a 10-gallon tank because you're super worried about your fish and it's your favorite fish, you don't want it to die, then yeah, you're going to crash your system and you're going to kill everything in that tank, okay? So... Erythromycin is, uh, is an antibacterial antibiotic, basically is what that is, um, and uh, cyanobacteria is a bacteria, and an antibiotic uh, thrown at a bacteria, it's going to kill it and eradicate it, okay? So erythromycin is the best way to treat cyanobacteria, in my opinion. Um, now, whenever you use erythromycin, it is an antibiotic, and if you have carbon inside of your filter, you want to take your carbon source out because uh, your, your activated carbon will take erythromycin out of your water column. It will uh, filter it out of the water. So basically, if you have carbon in your filter and you want to treat cyanobacteria inside your tank and you dump some erythromycin in there, you're wasting your money because the carbon's going to take it out. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, on the treatment cycle, okay? Generally, it'll take three to four days uh, to eradicate an average case of cyanobacteria inside of, a, inside of any system, okay? Uh, if you do what I'm telling you to do, it'll generally take f three to four days. Now, in extreme cases, uh, if your all your substrate and your plants and everything is completely covered with cyanobacteria, it may take 
seven, eight, nine days to uh, fix your problem, guys. Okay, so um, but your average case, it should only take three or four days to eradicate cyanobacteria with erythromycin. So, with that said, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope y'all learned something. Be sure to check out the links inside the description. Read about algae. It's very fascinating. If you like this hobby, uh, you'll definitely get a kick out of these. And be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. And we'll see y'all next time, guys. Adios.